Now Habersham is proud to sponsor interviews with the candidates for the May 24th political primaries. We hope by viewing these personal interviews, you'll get to know the candidates who will be making decisions that impact your life, your family, and your livelihood here at the local and state level in Georgia. We hope you'll vote May 24th, and we hope you'll be more informed in that process by hearing from the candidates themselves in these one-on-one -on -one interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. Hi, and welcome to Now Habersham. Today, we're visiting with Lauren Craig, who is uh, a candidate for the judge of Habersham Probate Court. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you very Glad much. Glad to have you on Now Habersham. So let's start off. Tell us a little bit about your formal education that has prepared you uh, for this position you're seeking, judge of probate court. Of course. Well, I graduated from Habersham Central here in 1984. I went to Truett McConnell for a year, then transferred to the University of Georgia. Got a bachelor's degree at the University of Georgia in 1989, and then did a lot of different jobs and a lot of different things. And in 2005, I entered John Marshall Law School. A uh, little bit of a late career change for me, but uh, I've enjoyed it very much. I graduated from there and passed the bar in 2009, and I've had a practice in Clarksville ever since. Well, let me ask you another question, Lauren. Outside of a formal education as an attorney in law school uh, and, and public school, what uh, practical experience have you had uh, in jobs or other places or other activities that might prepare you uh, to be the probate court judge? Well, I've had a lot of different jobs in my life. I've done construction. I've worked in the restaurant field. I've owned successful retail businesses. And I've got a law practice, of course, myself right now. So as a private business owner, I've had success. I've dealt with the books, the fiscal uh, authority and responsibilities that go along with that. I've had staffs and had to hire and fire people and things of that nature. Anything that goes along with a job where those things are a component of it, I've, I've got that experience and I'm very at home in it. Um, but we add on top of that that I'm also an attorney. I, I feel like that gives me a little bit more experience than the, than the average person for this job. Now in Georgia, and you could correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but we're not, we're not required to be an attorney to be a probate court judge in a county the size of Habersham County. I think we're under the threshold of 100,000 or something well, it's, like that. It's, it's 96,000 and we are quite a bit under that. We're mm -hmm. somewhere around 45,000 mm -hmm. right now. Um, I don't understand, I've never understood quite mm -hmm. frankly, why a community or a county whose population is above that is gonna be better represented than a county that's below that. Um, it's, probate law is not just an administrative position. It's not just a clerk. It's, you, there's laws to follow. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever read a law book, and certainly you could ask your son, but it is a different kind of reading and a different kind of thinking. And unless you've been exposed to it and dealt with it, as I have on a daily basis, you're not prepared to deal with it. So, so let me go on with this question. Uh, how is being an attorney uh, going to make you perhaps a more efficient or a better or a better informed probate court judge? Well, there's always training that goes along with it anyway. The probate judge has to do constant training, just like I as an attorney have to do constant training. You're not going to know everything when you step through the door. I would never expect to, but having experience in the field and reading laws and reading textbooks and case law and things like that, I feel like I'm better prepared to make the decisions that I have to make as probate judge based on what the actual law is. There were at one point, I think in 2011 or 2012, 300 changes in the probate law that, week, that year. 300 changes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of information to have to deal with. And I think someone that deals with it on a day-to-day -day basis is better suited to do that. I happen to have the good luck of uh, performing uh, some marriages for individuals in our county. And uh, of course, we, I, I tend to go with the people getting married to get their marriage license. I just like doing that. It's, I feel like it's a neat thing to do with them. Of course. Uh, but to get there <laughs> in the new courthouse, we have to come in the front door. And then if you don't know where it is, you, you have to ask, which that's not too bad, but it's down the elevator to the basement. And then it's wandering back through the basement to the very last possible door. Uh, what do you think about uh, that location for an office that is visited so often by people dealing with loss of, of loved ones or marriages or all the other things you have to do with probate court. 
It does. It seems a little strange to me. I, I think the placement of the office. I don't like where the office is. Um, not crazy about being in the basement to start with. It does have the plus that it is on a ground level. There's a parking lot out there, so there's sunshine. We're not <laughs> don't have just fluorescent lights beaming in, but it should be more accessible to everyone. I would much prefer it were on the first floor. I consider it one of the busiest offices sure. in the courthouse and why it is stuck down there. And it's, in, it's at the end of a really long hall and there's not a thing on the walls leading to it. And it is, it's, it's, it's a very lonely walk down to the probate office right now. Uh, not crazy about where it's situated whatsoever. I, they have vacant offices in there right now for the solicitor and the state court judge. And because those are part-time positions that those gentlemen have practices outside of the courthouse, they work out of their practices. They don't use those offices. And we're stuck down there. Where Now, given that, it is a far nicer office than it was in the old courthouse. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's much nicer, and there's a separate conference room for hearings and things of that nature. But still, the placement in the courthouse is not ideal. <laughs> uh, what are... Now... We have to agree that, that that's a small thing, but it is a, a sort of an image thing for the county. What is a serious challenge uh, that you might face or might be faced as the probate courts? What is a problem? What do we need to work on? Well, this county's population is aging. And if you look back at the numbers, the age above 65 is rising every year. Uh, it's going up and up and up and up. And a 45,000 residents that is getting to be, I think, close to 30% above the age of 65, which is significant. And you know, our, our, our parents and our grandparents and things like that, these people are passing, they're getting to the point where they have to have guardians or conservators to help care for them. Um, and those things are becoming, I'm sure, in a community like this, where, which is so populated by retirees, because people move from Florida to here, Ohio to here, in Arizona, I'm a real estate attorney as well, and we do a ton of ton of closings where people have moved from those locations to here to retire. Very friendly up here. Nice, nice mountain air. Not too hot. Not too cold. It's it's a good environment, and so we're seeing an influx of those type of folks. But with that influx comes, and people are living it longer and longer, comes the responsibility of caring for them as they age, and sometimes those people don't realize they need help. Sometimes they need help and are asking for it and can't get it from their families. And those are things that the probate judge has to deal with on a, on a daily basis. And I only see it becoming more prevalent as the times tick by. Mm -hmm. Are you a registered voter in Habersham County? Yes, I am. Um, what about um, outside activities? Uh, uh, people may not know you. Uh, as well as other people. So I know you, you, you've been here a long time, but uh, some people just may not know you. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself, interests, things you do, something so we can sort of define, you know, uh, define you? Well, sure. Uh, as far as civic, organ I'm a member Anything, of the Rotary yeah. Club in, in Cornelia. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently became a member of that, and I'm enjoying it very much. Um, my wife and I, we like to travel. We like to go to Jekyll, huge fans of Jekyll Island. Uh, spend a lot of time at home. Uh, I've got three dogs. Uh, that takes up, feels like half of my life at some point. The dogs are all on medication. Everybody's got to have their medication. It, it takes up a, it takes up a good chunk of your time. I like to walk. I love taking walks up to Tower Mountain, all the way back down. I love walking through the park. Used to ride a bike, uh, but that's when I lived in a flatter climate. <laughs> it's, it's, it's much more difficult in this area to ride a bike. You, ha you have to actually work at it. So I'm, I'm having a harder time with that. I'd prefer to walk. I have uh, had the good luck to be a reporter, television reporter in another state. Uh, my earlier days when I had less weight and more hair. Uh, but um, one of the, one of the, some of the stories I covered often were public uh, servants or officials, uh, particularly to public offices, who owned businesses or had family members who owned businesses that made money off decisions that were made by the government entities that they were elected to be in. And here in the state of Georgia, as a professor at Georgia State, I'm always amused when I discover that there are senators or 
state senators, state representatives who own businesses back in their counties and they vote <laughs> on legislation that actually financially helps those businesses. It's, it's always a little bit odd to me about that uh, coming from a state where that's not allowed. So uh, do you own any businesses that you would profit from if you were the probate judge? No, I only have a law practice right now and that practice does constitute probate law and real estate law, civil law, some family law. But if I were probate judge, I would of course have to stop doing sure. the probate law sure. and any clients I had that I had done their wills and things of that nature for. Or that I have a few odd clients where I am their power of attorney or the healthcare representative for them because they had no one else. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be able to perform duties for them sure. any longer. Yeah. But no, I don't, I don't have any business. It, probate law is not a legislative position. Uh, you're just in the position to help people. You're solving problems at the time. Right. So let me ask you, Lord. Um, how would Habersham County, particularly uh, the government part that you would be a part of in the probate court, how will it be better if Lauren Craig was, is elected uh, to this position? I think you'll find that the, the office would probably become more streamlined, more efficient. Um, there'd be no delays in having hearings and things of that nature. Um, while I do have a law practice and I intend to keep the real estate part of that practice, my office is less than three-tenths of a mile from the building, mm -hmm. so I'm never that far away. Um, I think financially, not that it's not that anything is being done wrong at the moment, but I think some could be done to generate some more money for the county. Closing estates, when you, when you first file a will to be, te be executor of an estate, there's a fee that goes with that, and the county collects that fee. There's also a fee when you have to close an estate. For a long time in the county, there was no pressure to close estates. States were open for years or decades afterwards, after everything had already been solved and done with. And people don't know to close them until they're told, because they're never told in the beginning that they're going to have to do that. Uh, so fees collected from the closing of estates. Right now, you can file a, file a will to be probated and have them bill you. While I have enjoyed that uh, as an attorney, not having to take a check with me at the time, uh, I think a lot of people take advantage of that and are late in paying or don't pay at all. Mm -hmm. I think the, the county ends up in a collection issue there. I don't ever expect to be in that issue because things will be paid up front, just as you would have to in any other office in the courthouse. Anything you file with a clerk of court, for superior court, or state court, or magic court, those fees are paid up front, and it has to be the same thing for probate. Right. We've been speaking with uh, Lauren Craig, candidate for Habersham County Judge of Probate Court, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. Hi, Dick Stafford for Now Habersham. We're speaking today with some of the candidates for the May primary here in Habersham County. And right now we're going to be speaking with uh, Jarvis McFarlane, a candidate for Judge of Probate Court. Welcome, Jarvis, to Now Habersham. Yes. Well, let's begin with uh, how your formal education has prepared you as a candidate as the probate job, judge for Habersham County. Well, I have an accounting degree from Piedmont College, a master's in business administration from Bernal University. Uh, the big thing in my, I guess, in my education has been is how I've taken that through the accounting world, and I uh, worked for 25 years for a, a Standard Telephone Company. Then I went out on my own after Standard merged with Alltel. At that time, I, I started experiencing a lot of different other things in the community, like people who had wills and you know and trust and things like that. So I have experience, experience back through being executors, being trustees. Uh, the uh, one of the key things that the, the probate uh, court does is is guardianships, and I have been a guardianship, done guardianships, and uh, uh, have one right now that is extended past ten years of being a guardianship. And uh, the associated with that is the is uh, keeping all the financial records and whatnot for that. Let me ask you, uh, uh, with your answers about formal education, how about practical experience in various jobs? You mentioned Standard Telephone. Yes. What are some other things that lend themselves so your experience exactly to what we expect the project probate uh, judges and the office, the running of the office, uh, to be able to to do? Well, one of, my, one of the big things that I would like to see the probate office do is I would like to see them get more involved in estate planning. And I'm do, I say that from that I'm, I'm an EA, an enrolled agent, which is a, 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 a IRS or Department of Treasury or whatever uh, position. It's, uh, you get involved in, 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 uh, in uh, estate planning. 
people uh, really need to start estate planning when they're in their 20s and 30s. If not, you get into this situation, you walk in that probate court in office and you say, you know, my aunt, my uncle, my parent, some loved one has passed away, what do we do? You know, they, that question should have been answered in some sort of a forum or whatever, back when you were 20 or 30 years old, you should have that kind of knowledge before you walk into the door. And that's one would be one of my goals to do that. Anyone who has visited the new Habersham County Courthouse the last two years and was seeking the probate judge office and the Good probate with that. <laughs> would discover that it's in the dungeon of sorts. Yes, uh, and not only in the down in the basement, but way off in a far corner. It's not. It's not really very uh, accessible, and and, and no. the signage is even a little bit limiting. Yes. So what what are your thoughts about something as simple as where we locate the yeah. office? Either either the whole office needs to be relocated somewhere to it's more friendly to the to our you know our members of our county to the people coming in. They you know they needs to be something there to be a little you know even if it's a little kiosk or whatever on that first floor, you know to somebody to be answer questions or whatever at that point or give you forms or give you you some sort of information before you have to go visit that dungeon. Yes, <laughs> uh, that, I, that just uh, first time I went down there, it just, that just took away from me. I, I, I could not believe that. Uh, being a probate judge and running the probate court office uh, takes a lot of time. Do you have yes. the time to do that? Yes. Uh, I, uh, like I said, I've, I've been doing all this accounting work for years and whatnot, and I'm, uh, I've gotten to the age to where I, I thought I was being ready to semi-retire and whatnot. I found out that after a year or so of that, no, I'm not. I've, I, I'm too, I have too much energy and, and want to be doing too many things. Uh, do you have any outside interests, uh, that you, hobbies, things, that your volunteerism that you could tell us about that would help uh, our uh, viewers uh, get to know you a little bit better? Okay. Uh, big thing, I, I, in my younger days, I volunteered was for the Boy Scouts of America. I was uh, in uh, Troop 24 in Cornelia and also on the board of directors for the Northeast Georgia Council. Uh, I think I had 28 Eagle Scouts in my tenure as a wow. Scoutmaster. Uh, I also have uh, received the Silver Beaver Award for leadership in the Northeast Georgia Council. Uh, I'm on the board of directors for the Habersham Christian Learning Center. And this year I did, um, I worked over at the Cornelia Library, the public library, and I did in, uh, in excess of 70 tax returns for our senior citizens over there. And those are uh, obviously at no charge. The Habersham County Commissioners oversee the budget of the probate judge yes. office. Uh, but you, who would be the judge in that office, and yeah. be the leader in that office, uh, might have thoughts about how much funding there is and how those funds might best be spent. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I definitely would want to have. Well, I want to have input, and I mean lots of input, because that is one of the areas. Be that I do have that master's in business administration. I am. I'm accustomed to budgeting. I'm accustomed to running an office. You know, on all the way down to the you know details and whatnot. So yeah, you know, I could. I, from the experiences I have gained over the years of doing the accounting work and doing work for other people, yes, I can walk in and do a budget on most, most any situation. I have the opportunity to marry people occasionally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this issue was brought up, not issue, it's actually not no. an issue. This topic was brought up uh, at the public forum at Georgia, uh, North Georgia Tech uh, College uh, a few nights ago. Um, but there haven't been weddings performed at the probate uh, judge's office, so we get our marriage certificates and apply right. for, for a first certificate there. Right. If you were elected, would you return to doing weddings in the office or? Uh, absolutely, if that was necessary, yes. Okay. Let's talk again a little bit about estate planning. Yes. Um, a lot of people don't know about that. They lose a loved one, they're upset, they're right. grieving. Uh, they may or may not have an attorney uh, handling their affairs. Uh, what would your office be able to do that maybe we haven't seen uh, there? Well, I, I've looked at the web, our, our website, and there's not a really a lot on our website that addresses estate planning. That's something that, that needs to be added to it. There's a link back to the state website for probate judges, 
but you know, and and on that side, once you get there, there is questions like, you know, what to do when I lose a loved one or whatnot. But if you go go beyond that and be proactive, um, back uh, if you you know if you go to any of your financial advisors, lawyers, uh, even your insurance agents right now, they're telling you to start planning to start planning for you know things like what happens to you if uh, along about middle age or whatever you you're crippled from some disease or whatever you know and uh, i know in on the, from the insurance side a lot of um, life insurance policies are being written such that now that that, that life insurance benefit converts into long-term health care if you so choose after you've had it for 20 or 25 years you can convert that over to to a long-term health care policy which is great you know so uh, people People, we you know we need to, we need to you know educate ourselves at a, at a younger age and all of the different things, not just you know what happens when the loved one dies. A lot of people think because you're you have the title of judge that you must also be an attorney or have a law degree, and in Georgia counties our size, the probate judge is not required to, uh, to have a law degree, uh, but in larger counties they do in Georgia. Yes. So what are your thoughts about? Uh, the need to be uh, either a law graduate or experience in a law office or even being an attorney to have this position? Well, uh, first of all, attorneys make a lot more money than, than, <laughs> than what a probate judge is going to be paid. So, yeah, and, the, and the, this uh, is one of the big reasons, I think, in the smaller counties. You know, you can't, you know, a person that's a lawyer can't just up and leave be a probate judge full time. And that is something the probate, that probate I get asked all the time now, is that a full time position? And I say, yes, and it, it is. So you can, you know, if you're going to be probate judge and you're an attorney, you need to leave the attorney back at your other office and work as a probate judge full time. I don't think in most cases it requires being a lawyer. I know, I, like I said, I've done, been the executor of several wills and whatnot, never used an attorney. And the first time I did it, uh, I had no, no problems, no issues. Uh, most of the counties you go to to uh, to do that, the probate judge and talk to talk to them. They are real nice people. They they are very helpful and whatnot. So there's n there's no reason to be a be an attorney, because you know you can you know, go through the process fairly easily. How would Habersham County be different uh, if uh, Jarvis McFarland was a leader, a public servant? Uh, I I think you would see me more outside that building. Uh, I, you know, because running for the office, I have thoroughly enjoyed going around through the county, meeting people. Uh, it, it's it that is that has been such a such a thrill to meet all the different people in the county. And I think you know, if I was elected to that position, you would still see me out doing that, out you know, seeing people and whatnot. Uh, I think it's like the I think the sheriff said last night, and he said you start running for re-election on day two on January the second. <laughs> I think you would you would find that I would be that same person on January second that I would be out there with the people again. Yes. Okay, Jarvis McFarland, congratulations, good luck to you as you run for a probate judge in Habersham County. Thank you, sir. This is now Habersham, and today we're speaking with Pam Woolley, a candidate uh, incumbent for the judge of probate court in Habersham County. Welcome, Pam. Thank you. Good to have you. Good to be here. Thank so you. let's talk about your formal education. And as someone pointed out yesterday, that, that could be all your education uh, that you've had as well. So, you know, one person pointed out to me, well, if so-and-so hadn't taught me to read and write, we wouldn't, I wouldn't even be thinking about this job. So what about your formal education to prepare you for the job that you're in? Well, I graduated with honors many years ago from Habersham Central. And I've been to North Georgia College, and I got a degree there. Well, I actually took accounting. So, and the rest of it has been hands-on experience because I've been for working at Aversham County for 29 years. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's talk about that. Uh, informal experience or work experience, those two things, I guess particularly your, your career experience. Mm -hmm. How are these, how have these prepared you uh, in the job you've been doing and the job you hope to continue to do? Uh, it prepares you extremely well. I mean. You, from different things you do, it prepares you for everyday things that you deal with. Customers, uh, different estates, different petitions, just everything. You know, you just learn from hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. So um, now you've, you've, you've been in this position. Uh, do you foresee some changes at all, or do you see some problems that might be worked on? Uh, well, I've been uh, addressed on a couple of issues, and I don't 
actually know if it's anything I can do anything about, but mm -hmm. I would like to. We'll speak to those. Okay, one of those is probate court is on the basement floor mm -hmm. at the very end. It's a lo very extremely long corridor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that we deal with are elderly people. And it does need to have better access for the elderly people to come in because it is a long way. It's a long walk. Mm -hmm. That was one thing. And then another thing, which would be nothing I could originate with, but we do a lot of 1013s, which is called an affidavit to apprehend. Mm -hmm. And I would sign the order, and they, the sheriff's office would pick up the person and take them like to Habersham ER for pre-clearance. And then they would go on, go on to a mental health facility for like 72 hours. There's a lot of people that we, we do these on that it would be so much easier if there was a, some way to get them help they need without them having to go through jail first or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that would be like for the lawmakers to do. So, so stream, streamlining of that process. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, you know, you've done this job, so you're familiar with mm -hmm. it. But let me just ask you this question because we've asked everybody else as mm -hmm. well. Do you have the time to do this job? Yes, I do. It, <laughs> it is my, it's my life. I just Tell us like a little it. bit about that. Uh, I mean, it, it could be that you work even more than a, a standard work week. So mm -hmm. what, what are the things that consume your time? All uh, right, mainly right now, let me start from the beginning. We do birth certificates. Mm -hmm. We do death certificates. Mm -hmm. We do marriage licenses. We don't do the ceremonies anymore because we don't really have the time. When I first took office, I did a lot of ceremonies, but we still issue the marriage license, and we do an extremely high amount of gun permits. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that part. You know, that's like everyday matters. And then on the other part, we do uh, guardianships of minors and incapacitated adults. We do your supports. We do administrations. We probate wills. That's the other part. But I mean, every day that goes by, you're doing both. You may go from issuing somebody a marriage license, you know, and they're happy and joyous because of what's going on, and then you may turn around and be crying with somebody because they've lost their spouse of 50 years and you're trying to help them do their probate. So, you know, you got to be fluctuate, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you a registered voter? Obviously, yes, I am. Have been for <laughs> quite a few years. Most people know you because you've been around the courthouse uh, so a fairly years. lengthy mm -hmm. time. But uh, there may be people who are new to Habersham County or don't have reason to be at the probate office. So could you take just a minute or so and talk a little bit about yourself, uh, either volunteers, organizations, outside activities, things you love to do, uh, just so uh, viewers can get an idea about you. Okay, I love, everybody laughs at this, but I love working outside. I love to rake and burn leaves. I'll drag brush out of the woods to burn, my husband says, because I just like, to, I love to work outdoors. Uh, I'm married to Wendell Woolley, and together we have four children. We've got four grandchildren with another one on the way, all boys, everyone on boys. Uh, I belong to Alto Congregational Holiness Church there. I've been a member there for a few years. And that's about all I do is work at home, work on the job, work outside, and go to church. What about the budget? Do you have uh, enough funds for the budget? Uh, that was spoken to the other evening a little now, right bit. Right now, we're good. I mean, of course, this budget will end on June 30th, and the new one will start then. Uh, to my knowledge, I mean, we had a budget hearing, and a couple of the things I asked for got cut. But, I mean, I think everything looks good. Mm -hmm. Everything looks good. Mm -hmm. And we are under budget. We're going to finish out the fiscal year mm -hmm. in good shape. So, mm -hmm. My family uh, and I, we moved uh, to Habersham County 27 years ago. And uh, it's a delightful place to live. But let me ask you, uh, this pertains to your work at the courthouse and the length of time you've been there. What do you attribute uh, to your knowledge and your ability uh, th that you've been giving this public service all along? How did you learn this information? Was there an individual or someone who was influential in you being who you are now today? Well, I have been very blessed that with my tenure there at the county. I have had some wonderful bosses. I started out with Lee Burke. And then I worked for Ann Adams for a long time, Ann Gerald. And then uh, I worked for Judge Butterworth at Magistrate Court. So they helped a lot. And, um, and most of it is hands-on experience. Just doing it daily basis, it, it, you will get it. It will come to you. Uh -huh. The other evening at the uh, 2016 Political Forum, uh, sponsored by the Habersham Chamber of Commerce and the Farm Bureau, Bureau uh, the discussion uh, was brought up about estate planning. Uh, at your part of that forum. Mm -hmm. 
Could you talk a little bit about that issue or that topic in relationship to the probate judge office? I can. Estate planning is wonderful. It's wonderful to have that, you know, done early in life. I, you know, I agree with that. But probate court does not have anything to do with estate planning. We only deal with what's presented to us, you know, petition-wise or case-wise. We don't initiate and we're not allowed to speak it because that's considered practicing law without a license. The people that would do estate planning would be like attorneys or estate planners, of course, or accountants even. But now probate court does not do estate planning. Uh, though you've been in this position for some time, uh, how would the county be different with maintaining your presence as the judge of probate court? They would be in the best hands they could be. <laughs> I mean, I think we do a great job. I think. I love the people of the county, I always have. I love to serve the people of Habersham County, obviously, you know, 29 years. But my staff and I, we do, we try to treat each person with the utmost dignity and, and courtesy and compassion we can. We've been visiting with Pam Woolley, incumbent and a judge for the probate court of Habersham County. Good luck to you, Pam. Thank you, Mr. Staff. All right. We hope you've benefited from these interviews sponsored by Now Habersham. And we want to remind you, be sure to vote May 24th.